now that we have a drawing that has an alignment in it, a construction profile, and an assembly, we have enough pieces here to build ourselves a corridor. I'm going to zoom extends just to refresh everything to make my curves look good again. I'm going to go up here to the corridor. I click on this button. I get my corridor choices here. I'm going to call this one here 60 foot road. So the name of the corridor is going to be 60 foot road. I'd give it a description, but not for this. It's going to put it on the C road corridor for us. It's going to use the alignment new 60 foot road, which is convenient because we only have one choice. But for the profile, it defaults to the surface. The surface is the red wiggly line. The elevation is the blue one that we created, so we're going to use that. We just made a new assembly called 60 foot road. Click on that, and 60 foot road has some targets that I would like to find. In this case, a target surface. I'm going to click on none and pick my EG. Now that I've got all my defaults picked or my basic pieces picked, when I say OK, it's going to let me set the baseline and region parameters. It also gives me an example of the corridor properties, which are going to be really useful for us in the future. Say OK. Here's our corridor properties. If we look at all the baseline properties, we can see that uh, the alignment it's using is right here. The profile is there. Those are the two that we set. The assembly is down here in the region. This region, in this case, happens to go the entire distance. So it's going to make a, a corridor the entire length of it. And it's going to build one of these every 25 feet, except for PIs and PCs. With, uh, with all those set, we're good. And if we double check the target, I'm going to click the top one here to see all the targets. I can see the target surfaces are set for EG. There is a feature or um, an element in this that wants to find an alignment or a profile, but I don't want to use it that way. I've given them this one here, link slope and width. I've given them hard numbers to use, so I want them to do that all the time. I'm going to say OK. Say OK. It's going to say, hey man, uh, some changes were made. Do you want to rebuild the corridor? In this case, I would like to say always. You can click the lower left button here to say always perform this. So whenever you make changes and you hit OK, it automatically rebuilds. But for me, I'm going to leave it unchecked right now and just say rebuild the corridor. Over here on the left, you'll see that it's drawn a very pink corridor for us. You'll notice anywhere where the line is red shows us a cut. And if I pan down here enough, anywhere the line is green is a fill. If we look at this, we can see oh, I would expect to cut somewhere in the beginning. I'd expect fills along here, and then I'd expect some more cuts down here, returning to fills there. If we look at that, what do we got? We got fills, we got cuts, and we got fills. Now with your corridor built, if I did a zoom extents, I'm going to pan that over so I can see my surface. Holding down shift and the middle mouse wheel, I can rotate this around and see what my corridor is doing. Sure enough, we can see a little cut and fill going on. Here we're building a little berm. Here it's cutting out a trench. Not too shabby. So far so good. Corridor 101. I'm going to type plan, hit enter twice, puts it back to our plan view, and now we're ready to put it together so we can print something out or manipulate parts of it. So far so good.